Hello and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who are joining today. We appreciate it. And um, hopefully today what we're going to help you guys out with is show you how you can minimize supply chain risks using Azure Synapse and Power BI, which will give you real-time insights into your business. So next slide, please. Thank you. A little bit about us. We are Alphabold and we are a consulting firm based in San Diego, California. We are a Microsoft Gold partner, helping companies achieve their goals through technology. Um, today, we have Aves Aslam joining us. He is our practice manager for business intelligence and has 11 years of experience using BI and analytics to help companies like yours. My name is Nick, I am the sales manager here, and I have 10 years of experience in account management making sure companies like yours are happy with companies like ours. Um, next slide, please. A little bit of a roundup on our focus areas for BI. From an industry standpoint, we do a lot of reporting within manufacturing, AEC, financial services, energy and utilities, healthcare and medical devices, and semiconductor manufacturing. In regards to the actual functionality, we do a lot with financial and sales forecasting, um, we work with marketing teams for marketing analytics, demand planning and order management for those working in the supply chain, and then some enterprise reporting and event tracking on warehouse floors. Looking in within different industries at where we have some specialized experience in energy, we deal a lot with big data and we work with a utility company actually out here where we compile all of their meter readings, which is an insane amount. Um, and we are able to take those readings and create these really simplified reports so that way they can analyze those. In the semiconductor space, we have done some industry specific work on their processes for designs to win and NPIs or new product introductions. In healthcare, we have developed our own solution for patient loyalty programs. We've also done reporting on device usage and tracking. Then we have somewhat combined what we are capable of or yeah, within the manufacturing and AEC industries, which is architecture, engineering, construction, and where we are creating these really simplified and really awesome looking dashboards that um, really look into things like equipment tracking, sales analytics, marketing analytics, project management, um, things like project budgets versus actuals, and then order book management. So we are hoping that today we can um, kind of show you what is capable within um, Azure Synapse and Power BI, and hopefully it can be something that you guys can adapt into your companies. Um, one thing to note, while we are focusing on Azure Synapse today, we have a holistic portfolio of industry and process specific services that you can reach out to us for to help you gain better insights into your business. Um, but with that being said, I will hand this over to Avace for pretty much the majority of this presentation. And if you do have any questions throughout, I will be monitoring those questions in the questions box. Feel free to enter them at any time and we will break periodically to answer those. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Avace. Thank you, Nick, for introducing me. And good morning, everyone. I'm your presenter, Avace Aslam. And let's talk about the today's outline. Well, first I will share a few statistics and survey results around benefits and performance gain in supply chain processes using advanced analytics and how it is helping manufacturers and distributors to work efficiently. Then we will discuss about major segment of supply chain and how advanced analytics plays its role in it. Then I will present a case study. And I have divided this case study into two segments to make it more business oriented. A part of this case study will cover business that have B2B operations and have large network of factories around the globe and want to monitor real-time operations of the factories. And the second part of this case study will cover businesses that are distributors or dealing with warehouse management. And then it is very important to know what is the significance of all the things that we are going to talk about in this webinar. Uh, well, I will describe importance of real-time analytics on supply chain. Well, obviously, uh, everything that comes up with the great importance also have challenges associated with it, and we will talk about those challenges as well. 
then we will talk about lambda architecture which is the for, which is the most famous architecture to solve big data problems to keep it more relevant to the business owners i will not go into into deep into technologies um, instead i will present what is required and why it's required and how microsoft platform has reduced the complexity of most challenging problem of the supply chain data and at the end i will give you a working demo of all the things that i have explained okay so it is very important to know uh, what would be the end result of doing all the effort or spending all the cost on a new process of analytics um, well if someone who is willing to opt uh, for advanced analytics then the numbers that i will share i am going to share with you will help them to take a decision um, so if you belong to a company that still working on an excel workbook and putting a lot of effort to get basic kind of information out of business um, and supply chain data, then let me tell you that um, according to, to the 2020 MHI annual industry survey, uh, number, of, number of supply chain managers using advanced analytics uh, grew their businesses from 17% in 2017 to 30% in 2018, and finally 40% growth at the time of the survey. And moreover, the 57% companies that are not using an advanced analytics for supply chain processes are planning to implement it, it by 2025. So I will tell you that it is not too late for any company to get the benefits of um, out of cutting edge advanced analytics. But uh, better you start early, the better insight and trends you will get out of your supply chain data. And these advanced analytic solution would become inevitable for your businesses uh, because as per the survey, advanced analytics industry is expected to grow from 21% um, by 2024. And if you need more details around this 2020 MHI survey, you can download report uh, from the link that has been provided in this um, slide deck. Well, now I will show you achieved result by the companies that embrace big data analytics. And the companies that embed big data analytics in their operations are far more likely to generate a range of important supply chain benefits. And few of them are mentioned here. As per the survey results, uh, survey results, companies are able to improve customer service and demand fulfillment by 46% for it, you can take an example. Um, they could easily see back orders, short orders, and perfect order ratios of the businesses. Uh, you need to make better order fulfillment. And second thing, companies are making 41% faster and more effective reactions to supply chain issues, like they can monitor bottleneck or hiccups at manufacturing sites or in logistics and they could take prompt action to adjust order delivery or processing. And the third, overall analytics increased by 36%. Um, they increase 36% supply chain efficiency. And the last and the most important, companies can increase or optimize inventory and asset product productivity by 33%. Uh, I will again give you an example of back orders or exceptions in items in a warehouse. Well, through analytics, warehouse manager, managers can predict future back orders or short items. They could gauge the performance of worker to enhance the productivity or performance of manufacturing units or sites and could be optimized by identifying uh, low performers in the business area. Uh, well, in short, it is a win-win situation at any level of analytics implementation. Okay, so it's time for a quick poll or the survey. So Nick, you can kick off the polls. Sure, I would love to, I love polls. So um, everybody, we would love to see your feedback here. First poll is live and it is, are you using any business intelligence tools for reporting and analytics as of right now? So that could be yes or no. That's no wrong answer there. Um, 
if you are using them, then maybe you're here to just learn a little bit more about what's out there. If you aren't, then hopefully we can commit to that you should be using them. Looks like as of right now, wow, we are split 50-50. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Usually one just like gets blown out way further than the other, but um, we'll leave this up for another two seconds. All right, yeah, stuck at 50-50. Thank you guys for your input there. We got a couple more for you. Another one here has to do with your warehouse management. So do you have any processes in place for warehouse management? Yes, no, you have no idea. That's not your business. <laughs> All right. And if you won't believe this, this is an even split, 33% across all three. That does, <laughs> that's crazy. Great, thank you guys very much for your input there. And one more poll. Thank you for bearing with me with all my questions. If you are using a warehouse management system, well, I guess that's only a third of you. Um, which one are you using, if any of these? The NetSuite in four, WaveTrack, Fishbowl, some other one? Okay. Looks like we have other as leading the track right now. I wouldn't worry if this one was all even, then I would have thought all these answers are fake. But yeah, it looks like other is leading the track there. All right, thank you guys so much for your input. We do appreciate it. And I'll send that back to you, Avit. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, now I will recap the whole process of supply chain. There are a lot of segments in supply chain and each segment has complex processes based on the nature of the business. Well, the first step of supply chain is procurement, where manufacturers procure raw material for their product and most of the time manufacturer place their factories near the raw material to avoid risk associated with logistics but still it's a real world and most of the time delivery of the raw material get disturbed because of it could be any factor on second stage manufacturers build products in factories a lot of product life cycle management solutions like oracle agile plm are available in market to keep track the products from design to manufacturing inside the factories. Well, keeping track of bill of material for each product and to make sure suppliers are providing materials on time um, are the most key challenges in manufacturing processes. Uh, and after creating products, uh, the manufacturers send consignments to the warehouses. Well, these warehouses could reside inside the factories or could be far away from the factories and near to the retailers for better delivery management regardless of the location when we talk about the warehouses then most of the companies use warehouse management um, tools like netsuite fishbowl info uh, wave track and and it could be other training solution that we have uh, seen in in the survey results and the whole process of using this solution is to streamline the warehouse management processes. Uh, this solution helps to keep track of order from line items to pick packaging and from boxes to the shipment. Um, anyways, when warehouses ship data to retailers or in some cases directly to the consumers, these warehouse management systems um, also helps to track the packages using tracking numbers as well. Um, and at the end, all that matters is a perfect order ratio. If your process is not able to achieve high perfect order ratio, then there is a fault in your supply chain process and analytics are the best way to find such kind of faults in the processes okay so as we talked about, talked about complete supply chain process and complexity of each segment we can easily see that it would be hard to cover each and every aspect of the supply chain process in this webinar and to make this session more productive, I have opted analytics for manufacturers and analytics for warehouse management. Um, and well, in the demo, I will show you how any company can plug and play uh, analytics for their businesses when, with little modification over it. 
we have prevailed analytics for manufacturers and procurement processes we have solved a lot of problems around inventory management uh, like keeping track of inventories and taking snapshots of inventory states for auditing so that you can go back in time to check what was the status of inventory as any of the date we have also analytics that will help you to monitor deliveries and track the order processing in the warehouse well also our analytics will help you to gauge the performance of your workers in the warehouses or factories and even the performance of the working units of the factories okay so from now on i will talk about the case study and optimize solution around it and what are the challenges um, associated with this uh, with the solution well this case study covered two aspects of the supply chain processes first one is for the companies that are large in scale and have a lot of data coming from the other, their factories uh, for instance if we talk about the manufacturers most probably they have factories around the globe near near to the raw material to make procurement process easy and cheap and these factories are generating lots of lots of data it could be it could be data generated by working units or plants inside the factories which could be machine generated data that gives delimited information around the manufacturing of product or data could be related to complex order processing like nested line items or bill of materials or it could be anything in any case if data is huge and your traditional systems are not able to handle the ingress of the data then first part of the case study is for you and imagine that factories that are uploading this huge data into cloud and and there could be two ways to upload it to the cloud if it is a mission critical data and businesses can't afford delays then it will be uploaded to cosmos db which is a cloud based nosql database or on the other end um it could be hosted to data lakes in in form of csv files for for the data processing and second part of this case study is for warehouse managers uh, once they receive products in warehouses then they have to manage all the distribution and depletion to market and this is very resource extensive process and generates lots of data uh, but for the sake of demo i will consider that the data volume could be managed by traditional relational databases we can label these two case study uh, first one is a business to a business in which factories send consignments to distributors or the warehouse management managers and second one is business to consumer where products are shipped to consumers directly from the warehouses um and the solution that i will present in the demo would be able to handle ingress of 1.2 terabyte of data in a cloud um and if we aggregate it on year level then this data ingestion will become 4 to 8 terabyte per year which is very high throughput and difficult to manage traditional strategies uh, and we need a powerful platform to um, and powerful resources to solve this problem well if we walk in more details about the first part of the case study which is business to business uh, processes in this in this case fact is generated cs generated csv files uh, with the delimited information and it uploads into the cosmos db um and we have already have um helped companies in this case to monitor what are the consignment that has been shipped to warehouses and if there is any delay in it then what is the root cause of it and it will also provide diagnostic analysis um as we have data from manufacturing unit as well and also if there is any any issue in logistic then it will be also be surface um, in this case scenario and the second part of the case study um is business to consumer and um, and and trending solutions that are involved in it are warehouse management like in for fishball and netsuite uh, most of the warehouse management solutions provide inbound and outbound flow of the warehouses uh, with details around order processing picking packing and delivery well we have our own custom connector to fetch all the data from number of warehouse management system like um, into power bi if i tell you uh, as per industry trends oracle netsuite is the leader among warehouse management system solutions 
provider and also best suitable for third party logistic processes. Uh, we have solved problem for our client in which they were using NetSuite and uh, WaveTrack warehouse management solution for their WMS transactions. And that solution was capable to cover almost all aspect of WMS processes. They were able to monitor line item um, processing, packaging, picking and ship shipment right from the single Power BI dashboard. And this uh, dashboard I will present you in my demo. Okay, so moving forward. Now at this stage, I can summarize most of the benefit that I have explained so far in broader spectrum. For example, big data and real-time analytics are playing instrumental role in improving supply chain management. Uh, it resolves several pain points at strategic, operational, and tactical level. If I, if I covered strategic um, umbrella, then analytics help us to accurate planning and scheduling. A uh, business owner can easily plan and schedule shift of factories based on delivery of raw materials, and they could easily set the expectations of distributor if there is any potential hiccup in production environment. And under the umbrella of tactical, uh, we can help companies to improve demand planning. The more visibility companies have on depletion and sales, more they would be able to improve demand forecasting for products. And on operational side, which is the most important aspect to keep the supply chain business up and running, we can use real-time analytics to keep real-time supply chain processes to up and running. We can get real-time in, uh, insight or alerts from the actions that have been happening on ground and mitigating it um, with immediate response on it. And you can imagine it would be a huge value addition on overall process. And as I discussed earlier, at the last, uh, the thing that mattered the most is perfect order ratio. If companies are using analytics, then they would be in better position to enhance order optimization, and that all leads to improve responsiveness on real-time operations. Well, all the benefits of supply chains we talk about so far come with challenges as well. More complex the business we have, more challenging it would be for implementation. But if I, if we generalize these challenges, then we can clearly say that four areas are most challenging uh, in this domain, in which first is time itself. Well, time could have very vague definition itself. For some companies, latency of uh, three to four hours would be tolerable. Uh, for real-time analytics and for, uh, for some cases five minutes old data would not be a true representation of actual business um, and the second challenge is, is the volume challenges associated with the increase or digestion of the data uh, in the system well microsoft azure cloud has simplified this challenge on hardware level and most of the data data volume uh, issues are now problem of the cloud platform itself because elastic pools we can increase or decrease uh, hardware resources on the fly based on the current load in the system or on the other end if you have to handle this challenge by your own then it would be a great deal to manage all the hardwares according to the load of the system and well also azure synapse uh, azure cosmos tv and data lake services are designed to handle any amount of data ingestion and on the architecture level um, it is very difficult to architect the solution that is that provide flexibility with efficiency well there isn't there isn't any magic architecture for big data problem but every architecture needs to be modified according to our own business requirement but there is an architecture which we call um, big data and in which we call lambda architecture that solve most of the problems but we also modify it based on our own requirement and at the last i am putting cost on the fourth position in the challenges list um, as it could be relative based on businesses one aspect of the cost is 
dollar amount associated with the whole process of analytics and second aspect of the cost is that our your OLTP server will will pay when you will run analytics um, on on the live data for example as we are getting streams of the data in in our OLTP server or it could be a NoSQL database but when we run heavy analytics query on it it will put put load on the server that could also be possible a factor to defer online transactions uh, because of the load on the server so it's a very challenging job to find a balance between them okay so now i will talk about the architecture that is required to um, implement real time analytics and analytics on batch or archive data i will try to keep it simple so that business user could also get the essence of technology platform uh, well lambda architecture uh, is the most widely used architecture in this industry uh, in this industry to solve big data analytics problem and we can divide uh, this architecture into three layers our uh, first first one is the speed layer which is responsible for holding all the delta or new volume of the data for instance um on speed layer uh, there there are speed layer views or data tables and they are only responsible to hold data for last three hours and older than that data would be purged out from speed layer table so we can say it is a buffer which is uh, dedicated to latest incoming high volume of the data then we have um then we have batch layer and in this layer we keep all the data of the business we can consider a single source of growth for all the business operations uh, it contains large csv files tables and views and it has also master repository and on the third layer we have serving layer which combines streaming data from the real time views and batch data from the batch views um to run and then it run complex queries on both of them to get 360 degree view of your business okay so in previous slide i showed generic lambda architecture so now question is what is needed to implement it on um, on open source technology stack well the answer is it requires a lot we need number of frameworks tools and technologies to get the desired result for example, Apache Kafka will be required for data ingestion uh, for mission critical transactions. And then Apache Spark will be required to process uh, real time data hosted initially on the data lake. And all data files will be hosted on Hadoop file system. We will process data in Spark and then create new files um, or Spark tables uh, to serve the purpose of batch views. And at the end, MongoDB or Cassandra, which are NoSQL databases, will be required to run queries on stream as well as batch data. So this whole track looks very complex to me, and maybe it will also look complex to you. But the good thing is Microsoft have, has replaced all these complex technologies um, and, and processes uh, under two Azure services. And if we talk about how we can implement real time batch data processing using Lambda architecture um, on Azure Cloud, then you can see we only have Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Synapse Analytics um, at the end. Of, at the end. Um, we could connect Power BI for, um, for analytics as well. Okay, so let me give you a brief intro of cosmos db and azure synapse cosmos db is no sql no sql cloud based database which comes up um, with default geo replica and backup policies and azure synapse is designed to run processes um, process data on data lakes well it is it is way more than uh, but but the sake of simplicity assume that that this is big data processing engine well we had separate uh, webinar um, on azure synapse that you could get from our website 
And on the real-time analytics is only possible because of the revolu revolutionary connection between Azure Synapse and the Cos Cosmos, Azure Cosmos DB. Otherwise, there should be many ETL and warehouses uh, be involved to run queries on streaming data. Well, Cosmos DB is responsible to ingest mission critical data on the cloud. Um, it could ingest megabytes of the data per second without any transaction abortion. And basically it is a transactions data store um, and all the transaction land on Cosmos DB for further processing. And we can get live stream of data directly from Cosmos DB and we can create batch data sets or can archive data in Azure Synapse. Then both can easily connect with each other using Azure Synapse link using uh, using this link or connection we can submit queries on live as well as batch data okay so all the magic that that has reduced the complexity of real-time analytics is happening inside this analytical store um, and i'm sure this is the coolest feature of the cosmos db so far um, as you can see here, we have transactional store, uh, transactional store in the Cosmos DB, and it is ingesting huge volume of the data uh, in Cosmos container. And you can say it is a table of the Cosmos DB. And if we want to get insight from uh, for transactions that are happening in, in the system, then it would not recommend it to um, get data directly from the transactional store um, as it could read directly data um, or sometime could force the transactions to abort. So Microsoft has provided out of the box feature uh, to implement analytical store inside the Cosmos DB on transactional store without any effort or extra charges. It is same like creating an OL, OL OLAP server on OLTB servers. And analytical stores um, is separate storage for transactions that are stored in columnar manner for better query results. And also no need to create specialized ETL to keep analytical store up and up to date. Cosmos DB make sure that analytical store um, always be updated with latest transactions that are coming in transactional store. Once we have analytical store with latest data, then we can connect this analytical store with Azure Synapse to run queries on analytical analytical store instead of transaction store. And obviously, which results in quick response from server for reporting and analytics. Okay, so, so far, I explained Lambda pattern for real-time big data analytics, and we talk about how Microsoft has reduced the complexity of the architecture, and we have also implemented the same architecture for our supply chain analytics solutions. Well, analytics that we have for supply chain not only runs on historical data, but also run on live data as well. So real-time monitoring of warehouses and factories can be achieved using it. And if I explain you the process of analytics that you can use for production units, um, uh, our factories, we we ingest data in Cosmos DB directly from factories, and then connect Cosmos DB with Azure Synapse using Azure Synapse link, and then we do data engineering inside Azure Synapse to build enterprise data warehouse for for analytics. After that, either we could build visuals and graph inside Azure Synapse workspace, or we could connect the same data with Power BI for extensive reporting. Uh, and in case of distributor and warehouse managers, we get data from NetSuite and WaveTrack, and we are also getting data from Infor using our own custom connector for the Power BI. Uh, it gives us power to ingest data uh, inside Power BI from heterogeneous sources. And all these sources can be combined together inside the Power BI data model for analytics. 
Okay, so that is the overall architecture of the solution that we have uh, in built solutions for analytics. Now, let's head to a demo to showcase all the processes that I have explained in the presentation. Okay, so this is my Azure Cloud and and the services that I span up um, for this demo are Cosmos TV and I have Azure Synapse workspace, then I have Data Lake, and then I have then I have Data Factory, and that Data Factory is responsible for moving data from CSV to Cosmos DB um, or from Cosmos DB to uh, Azure Synapse. And I will explain these services one by one in this demo. So let's talk about first about the Cosmos TV for itself. So this is the view of Cosmos TV interface. So um, this is the data explorer, and you can see there uh, we have uh, we have the container supply chain 12, and it contains multiple collection of item inside it. It contains ID, project code, uh, country managed by vendor and there are a lot of information associated with order processing and we have enabled analytical store on this container so behind the scene it is creating um, it is creating a parquet file uh, in the data lake to keep this information sync with analytical store so whenever the transaction will come inside the supply chain um, container then copy of this transaction will occur in a parquet file that will be hosted on the data lake so whenever i will run a query on on this container then it will not be execute on the live data rather it will be execute on on the parquet file on the data lake and to enable a, um, to enable a container you have to just simply uh, select the checkbox on this container that you need a new analytical store for it but the thing is you need a dedicated server for the cosmos db there is another version in which uh, we have serverless um, serverless cosmos db and it charges based on the transaction happening on the server but there is a dedicated server for the cosmos db that allows you to create um, an analytical store on the containers and the second thing uh, that you have to do is you have to enable um, enable a Azure Synapse link feature in the Cosmos DB. So this will expose the data in the analytical store to Azure Synapse. So let's move to Azure Synapse first. So this is the interface of the Azure Synapse workspace. And you can see here, I have uh, spun up um, a built-in built -in serverless pool, which is a Spark, Spark pool um, of the Azure Synapse. Then we have a dedicated SQL pool um, of the Azure Synapse. And if I want to, um, if I want to navigate uh, on the data, then I have to open this Synapse Studio in a separate browser when you will click on this uh, open sign up studio then it will open a window in the next browser and this is a view of um, azure synapse analytics workspace and previously azure synapse was only responsible for creating um sql pool and it was creating a sql pool for the data that is coming inside the azure synapse now Microsoft has uh, integrated a lot of services inside this um, Azure Synapse workspace. And you can see here, um, I have integrated Power BI with Azure Synapse. I have integrated Cosmos DB with it. I have associated a data lake with, with this Azure Synapse workspace. And if I, if I go to the data section, then I will see a cosmos connection under the link databases if your database is if your cosmos database resides inside your uh, so inside the same resource group then it will identify the resource uh, cosmos db by default and you can see here 
uh, there is an analytical icon with this folder. This is a container that we have created in Azure Cosmos DB. And it shows us that we have also enabled an analytical store on this container. So whenever we will run a query, Azure Synapse will send a query to the Parquet file that has been inside the data lake instead of transactional store. So if if your Cosmos DB reside um, somewhere else, uh, some, uh, somewhere else, then you can add it by um, by pressing this plus button, and then you can um, connect to external data sources. Then you can select Cosmos DB, and then you can provide the rest of the information that is required in the wizard. And in this case, uh, I have created a SQL query. Um, and in this query, I am sending a request to Cosmos DB using open row set function. Um, and I am aggregating a few of the orders um, on, on the date level. And, and all this query will be sent to, um, sent to the Parquet file instead of transactional store. And you will get data um, in live manner inside a grid. So it will take a few time maybe a few seconds and i am performing group by aggregated function and i have using the same logic um, and the same query that we use for tsql i am aggregating a bunch of orders on the date level and we can see that um, on the date level the count of delivered orders and count of pending orders and if i want to create a visual on top of it then you have to click on the chart and then um then we can select a schedule delivery date on the x-axis then we can see the gap between total orders processed or delivered and total order pending at that day so in this way we can we can get a real-time graphs of the data that is coming inside our cosmos db so that is the first case in which we can monitor our live data and the second case is in which we can build our extensive reporting uh, that is um, that is in our SQL uh, warehouse pool. And we have integrated Power BI service with it. And you can see here um, the report that will present here will be fetching data directly from Azure, um, Azure Synapse data warehouse. And it will be running um, on whole bunch of the data instead of get, instead of running on on the real time data it will be running on historical data as well and we can we can create same um, interface that we have in power bi we can create slicers we can slice and dice based on any of the um, any of the visuals we can see the distributions of revenue over the world we can see trend by year month and the date we can see total percentage or the total revenue by order type. And then we can also select any of the slicer to analyze it on, on for the specific um, uh, for the specific case. So that was the case in which um, I have presented a real time analytics and and the historical analysis on on the data that is coming inside Cosmos TV. And in second case, in which we are getting data directly from from the warehouse management system uh, we have power bi reports and and these power bi reports are getting data from our custom connectors that has uh, that is responsible for fetching data directly from the warehouse management systems to power bi data model and you can see here uh, we have data uh, for for the last four years and uh, which shows us uh, how many orders we have uh, process in warehouse management systems um, how many orders we we have picked what was the loaded orders and what was what are the pro, uh, pre on invoiced order and we can also see the trend by uh, by year for specific status of this order for example we can see the shipped orders we can see trend of completed order we can see canceled order over the period of time we can also see the picked orders and at the end, we can uh, we can distribute or decompose um, decompose all the business using the decomposition tree for diagnostic analysis. So as it is running on the four years of the data. So um, and last refresh was um, uh, was it 
and this is a date range that we have selected um, but if we want to see what has been happening inside the warehouse right now then we have an, a, another report that is built on transactional um, information of the warehouse so in this report as you can see here um, we can monitor complete operations that has been happening in in warehouse right now um and the date range for for this um, analysis is for the last 14 days and um, you can see here uh, again we have the same structure we have order fulfillment number statuses host priority batch and the customers and we can see how many orders uh, we have processed in last 14 days um, and how many orders um, has been picking to ship and what are the back orders and what are the exceptions orders currently inside the warehouse. And I will present you a case here. So I have uh, sorted it based on the dec um, deciding order of the line item. So I will open the sales order that has 93, 93 line items inside it. Uh, and if I want to see the details associated with the sales order, then I I will click on it. Then all the associated visuals uh, that are down there will be refreshed for specifically for this order. And I can see here all the 93 lines item um, are are available here. And there isn't there isn't any short item inside this um, inside this order. And if I want to see um, order picks for this sales order, then I have to click on this uh, button. Then I can see um, that this order has been picked and this order has been packaged. For, and I can see the zone ID, location of the warehouse and the description associated with it. And if I am interested to know what are the boxes involved in this order processing, then I can see um, list of all the boxes that contain these line items. So currently it is fetching live from the data warehouse management system. Uh, so you can see these are the books, box IDs that are associated specifically for this order number. And we can also see that uh, either this box has been shipped or not. Uh, we have flag here, uh, has shipped, can ship, and the line items um, uh, that, that is associated with this box. And as they are shipped, then we can also see shipment information associated with these boxes. So again, it is fetching uh, live data from the WMS system. So it will take a few seconds. Okay, so now I can see that um, that was the box ID and um, and the tracking number associated with box ID and what was the weight of this box and what what was the carrier that we used for this packaging and and the interesting thing is uh, we can also we can also see who was the responsible for this shipment and boxing so we can we can monitor the performance of a warehouse worker based on this column we can identify uh, how many boxes has been processed by xyz packer and what was the velocity of um, velocity of his packing throughout the day and i will present you another case inside it uh, which is a very interesting um, let me select uh, a back order or shorted items so when i will select a shorted status from this filter then all the information in all the grades will filter down for shorted um, order status so we have four shorted orders and if i if I want to see the reason behind this short order, then I will click on this order. Then under the order lines, I can see what was the item that was short uh, while processing this order. So I can see that this was the part number that was short during this um, order processing, specifically for this order number. And if I select all the, um, if I unselect on the selection, then I can see all the shorted item in my warehouse manage, management or in in my warehouse to and we can i can take a prompt action and you can take a prompt action to uh, solve this kind of short orders uh, or the back order in in your warehouse same is the case with the exceptions order uh, if i select exceptions status then 
only exceptions order will will be rendered in, in these grids and the the links are hyperlinked you you can open um, the link of NetSuite or WaveTrack or any warehouse management system directly from uh, from the Power BI for the more details. And you can see that these are the exceptions or the statuses of the part number that that makes um, these orders to to be exceptional. Um, and and so that how you can identify the exception orders in your warehouse. So. That's all I have for the presentation and for the demo. I will hand it over to Nick. Nick, you can take it over. All righty then. Hello, everybody again. Um, if you want to jump back to the slide deck there, Vis, and then I would guess jump one forward. There we go. Okay, so. Again, thank you, Avais, for taking us through all that. It was a ton of information. Um, hopefully, it was insightful for everybody out there. I mean, really, big data. You need a place to store it, and then you need a way to bring it in and analyze it. And with these tools, you can easily do that. And if you guys are looking to do those things, we would love to talk to you. Um, let us know. We can set up a one-hour workshop where we kind of look at what kind of data you're working with, how you are analyzing it now, maybe brainstorm some ideas as far as how we can improve those processes. And then um, also kind of give you some suggestions on what to do and where to go. And then hopefully kind of develop a data-driven culture at your company where you're making some more informed decisions, which will ultimately um, lead to more success. So um, yeah, on the next slide, I think we have our contact information. Yes, we do, perfect. That is our contact information. We do have a survey coming up as this ends, so we would love to hear back from you. Um, let us know what brought you here. Let us know if you'd like us to reach out to you. Um, and also let us know if there's any improvements that we can make for future webinars on topics or anything like that. And outside that, we will have one of our bold enthusiasts reaching out to you. So please expect an email from either Ryan, Travis, or Judd. They are super friendly, they don't bite, they love to talk. So if you got something on your mind, let them know. And otherwise, uh, thank you guys so much for spending some time with us today. And we will uh, talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you everyone.